Hey guys, Miss Miklos here, and Milo is meowing as well. Appar <clears throat> apparently, he doesn't like ellipses, but I do. And that's what we're talking about today, um, section 11.5 ellipses. And we're going to start with our definition. It is in a plane, the set of all points such that the sum, and I really want to focus on this word sum here, of, or to the two... To the two foci to the point is a constant. And this word foci actually means the plural of focus. So, a quick explanation. Okay, so here's the quick explanation. We have our focus one and our focus two. Those, so, those are our two foci. And this is what an ellipse looks like. It kind of is like an egg shape. It is like a circle that's not perfectly round. And the way that it is formed, okay, every single point on here, the sum to the two foci is the same value. Okay, so in this case, let's just say at this point here, this is 2 and this is 4. That means that sum would be 6. So here would be like 3 and 3. Here might be like 1 and 5 or something strange like that. Okay, so that is what an ellipse actually is. This is not accurate and not to scale, but I just want to give you a general idea of that. So here is our general formula for an ellipse. And you guys might notice that it looks very similar to a circle. Both x and y are squared and we have a positive. But what's kind of weird here is I have an a squared and a b squared underneath. The other thing that's kind of strange is that it is set equal to 1. And when we have an ellipse, there are three things that we need to go ahead and list. Um, the center is HK, and that's very similar to how we found the center for a circle. The x-intercept is plus or minus A. Okay, so that's the square root of this denominator, and that's going to tell us how far out we're going to the right and to the left from the center. Our y-intercept is the square root of the y-squared denominator, and that's telling me how far up and down we're going from the center. So how do we know if something is an ellipse? The very first thing, let me get into a pen, not my laser, is that we have both x squared and y squared. Okay, so that's how we can tell something is an ellipse and not a parabola. Our second char characteristic is once again, I have x squared plus y squared. And so far this is looking really similar to our characteristics for a circle. But here is the kicker, x squared and y squared have different coefficients. So that is how I can tell if something is a circle versus it being an ellipse. Okay, we know a circle, it's going to be like 2x squared plus 2y squared. An ellipse will be something like 2x squared plus 3y squared, okay? So these are the three things that we're looking for if we know that it is an ellipse. So number one, we have 9x squared plus y squared equals 36. Right away, I can see that this is an ellipse. And the major reason why I see that both x and y are squared, it's addition, and they have different coefficients. So the first thing that I need to do here is I'm going to look and see do I need to go ahead and complete the square? And I can see I do not need to complete the square here because I don't have an extra x or an extra y. So once I've determined that, I need to get my constant equal to 1. So the way that I'm going to do this is to divide everything by that number. So I'm dividing everything by 36. So this becomes x squared over 4 plus y squared over 6 equals 1. Now we can see that this is in the correct form. And in fact, my center would be 0, 0 because I do not have anything inside the parentheses. My x-intercept, I'm going to go out the square root of 4, which is 2. And my y-intercepts, I'm going out the square root, I don't know why the heck I wrote 6 there, it should be 36, there we go. The square root of 36, which is plus or minus 6. So I'm starting here at 0, 0. 
I'm going to go out two to the right and two to the left. And I'm going up six and I'm going down six. And I'm drawing my ellipse. And there we go. That is all there is to it. Okay, so once again, I knew this was an ellipse because they were both squared, added, but different coefficients. I did not need to complete the square here because I didn't have an extra X or Y hanging out. And I had to get this equal to 1, so that's why I divided everything by 36. Looking at number 2, once again, I can tell this is an ellipse because they're both squared, addition, different coefficients. So I'm going to write a nice little note to myself. Ellipse. I do not need to complete the square here. So I'm going to divide everything by 90. The reason why I'm dividing by 90 is because I want this constant to be a 1. So I get x squared over 9 plus y squared over 10 equals 1. So once again, my center here would be 0, 0. Our x-intercept is going to be plus or minus 3. Our y-intercept would be plus or minus the square root of 10. Now, obviously, I can't just graph the square root of 10, so we're gonna have to go ahead and put that in our calculator and determine what that value actually is. And I get it to be approximately 3.2. So what we're gonna see here is that I'm going out three and three in the x, and I'm gonna go 3.2 and 3.2 in the y direction. So we're going to see that this one almost looks like a circle. In fact, the closer together these two coefficients are, the more round it's going to be versus being linear. Okay? But this is all we would need to do. Number three, I'm going to put a nice little star by number three because I think this can be a tricky one. And the reason why is because looking at this, I can tell it's an ellipse. So I'm going to write that down for myself again. But what makes this tough is it looks like it's in the right form because I already have a 1. But I don't have things that we are um, dividing by. So what we need to do here, I know that y squared is the same thing as y squared over 1. And I need to think. Is there another way of saying multiplying by 9 in terms of division? And I know that dividing by 1 ninth is the same as multiplying by 9. So if I have a coefficient in the numerator, I'm going to write it as dividing by the reciprocal in order to get this in the correct form. So once again, my center here is going to be 0, 0. This time, my x-intercept is plus or minus the square root of 1 ninth, which is 1 third. My y-intercept is plus or minus the square root of 1, which is 1. So what we're going to see here is that we have a little tiny baby ellipse where I'm going out 1 third in the x direction and 1 in the y direction, and it is really little. Looking at number four, um, this one can be tough because right away, I cannot really tell what type of conic section this is. However, I can definitely see it is y equals a positive square root, which we learned means that I'm graphing the top half. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to divide both sides by five, and then I'm going to square both sides. So when I square both sides here, I get y squared over 25 equals 1 minus x squared. I want to get x squared and y squared on the same side. So I'm adding x squared over. And at this point in time, I can see that this would be an ellipse because it's addition. They're both squared. But they have different coefficients. This one is 1 and this one is 1 /25. So I'm writing ellipse. Okay, I know x squared over 1 is really our denominator there. So our center is going to be 0, 0. Our x-intercept is going to be plus or minus 1. And my y-intercept is going to be plus or minus 5. Okay, so I'm going 0, 0 
I'm going out one, and I'm going up five, and I'm only graphing that top half because at the very beginning, we made a note that I only had to graph the top half. Now, if you guys really wanted to draw a dashed bottom half, that's fine, but I wouldn't need to do that. And our final example of the video, this one looks lovely because it is actually in the correct form. And I can see it's an ellipse because we have different coefficients, addition, both are squared, and it's already equal to one. Okay, so I'm writing once again that this is an ellipse. This time my center is a little bit different. It would be negative one, positive three, because I know I'm taking the opposite of these two values. My x-intercept is going to be plus or minus four, and my y-intercept is going to be plus or minus two. Now what makes this one different is instead of equals, I have an inequality symbol. So I know that if it says less than or equal to, we are going to have to have a solid line, and I know I'm going to be shading somewhere. So I'm going to start at negative one, three. And probably one of the biggest mistakes I see is when we deal with the x and the y intercept, I'm going from this point. So from negative one, three, I'm going out one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm going up two and down two. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw my ellipse. It's solid because it says equal. Now I need to figure out where to shade, and I know I'm either gonna be shading out here or inside my ellipse. And if you think back to our last lecture, um, I told you guys often it's easiest if we substitute in the center. So if the center works, this is where I'm shading. If it doesn't work, I'm shading on the outside. So I'm going to do not x. I'm substituting in for x. So negative one plus one squared over 16. Plus three minus three squared over four is less than or equal to one. And this is why this becomes beautiful. Zero plus zero is less than or equal to one, which is a true statement. So what that means for me is I am going to go ahead and shade, and I'm trying to get a bigger pen here. Here we go. So I'm gonna shade everything inside here. Okay, so this is just a good reminder that our square roots and our inequalities don't go away. We still need to be thinking about that with each new conic section that we are learning how to graph. So in closing, something is an ellipse. They're both squared, different coefficients, and addition. So have fun tonight um, doing your homework, and I will see you guys later.